Thanks very much. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, great, great to be here. Thanks to the OAAA for, for allowing us to spend a few minutes with you today. I think for us, we, uh, we don't know uh, about the results of the presidential election right now. Uh, and it may be some time before we know all the answers there. Uh, it's the same as we think about the, the advertising market. You know, we have some answers today based on the data and the good news, uh, which is really positive, is that, you know, as both third quarter 2020 earnings and fourth quarter, uh, the outlook that we're hearing from uh, advertisers, from marketers, uh, operators, media owners, you know, they've all validated that brand advertising has had a nice solid rebound. And we would expect that momentum to continue through year end 2020. Uh, so in short, you know, the billboard audience has returned, which is great to see. You know, we're starting to see some pockets of growth in transit, but clearly, you know, ridership levels across the board are down. Uh, and that's seeing the growth there, you know, come back more slowly. You know, in some of our discussions, and, and we'll turn to the presentation now, um, you know, I'm going to uh, go through the presentation quickly. So feel free to pause us at any time. Uh, but in terms of, of some of our discussions with out-of-home operators, you know, we, we've heard some concerns expressed that, you know, there could be a return of, of social unrest post the election. Uh, but, you know, cities around the U.S. have been preparing for, for potential looting. And, uh, you know, for those of you working outside New York City, you walk around Midtown and that sort of validates some of these concerns with stores boarded up. Uh, but, you know, we haven't, we haven't seen too much yet, although some planning by advertisers and marketers um, have pulled back spend a little bit in, in, in anticipation of some potential unrest, but not, not many. Uh, so not many marketers are canceling or postponing spend through year end, uh, rather, whether related to the election or otherwise, which is all positive for the industry and for advertising more broadly. So as we turn through the deck and you can, you can see on pages um, three and four, which we can skip through really quickly, just really some information on us. Uh, but, but you can see on pages three and four of, of this presentation, uh, you can see that, you know, what we do and where we spend time. Um, and turning now to page uh, seven of the presentation, you know, what we're really showing you here is that, you know, we're seeing uh, nice growth into 2021. You know, we're seeing um, some pressure, obviously, on 2020 growth because of the first half of 2020. But you're seeing nice growth into 2021. You know, really, if you look across the board, it's called 9 to 16 percent growth is being forecasted by Wall Street for 2021. And this is for out of home advertising growth. So uh, the industry is certainly, um, you know, the industry analysts and, and the industry is seeing that, you know, momentum into Q4. And, and um, you know, we're obviously excited about 2021. You can see on slide eight now, um, as we flip forward, Erica, hopefully you can flip that to the next slide. There we go. Uh, so you, you see that 9 to 16% growth for, for out-of-home media overall. Uh, digital out-of-home media expected to increase, you know, almost 20% in 2021. You know, if you look at uh, Magna Global estimates, you know, they're showing, uh, you know, 10% growth in 2021 for out-of-home versus all media at 4%. So clearly out-of-home, you know, continues to outpace uh, overall media spend in terms of a channel. Um, and look, as we mentioned at the outset of the call, you know, bil the billboard audience is clearly back. Um, and obviously transit will, will, as you see in this JP Morgan note, you know, transit's taken a little bit longer and we think ridership levels will continue to slowly ramp up. But until we see those ridership levels uh, really materially ramp up, you know, we think transit will, will lag. Um, if you see on the next slide, and this is slide, slide nine now, page nine, you know, the, the what's happening in terms of earnings, we're seeing um, earnings now um, across not only out of home, but other advertising channels. You know, it's hard to forecast, continue to be hard to forecast where uh, folks see uh, the rest of 2020 and, and beyond. Uh, but the good news is those that are forecasting are uh, forecasting you know, nice growth, seeing some, some momentum and bookings and, and pacings, but it's still, still below where uh, we'd all love it to be. But I think with time, uh, you'll see more and more guidance being given and more comfort in where things are going. And if you turn to the next slide, um, you can see that, uh, again, from some of the other out-of-home media operators that we cover and track, um, you know, certainly the, the, the momentum is there. Obviously, challenges around cinema continue, um, but, you know, the hope is that midway through 2021, uh, cinema audiences will return. So turning now to, to slide 11, I think the key takeaway here on slide 11 is, you know, the power of out of home has always been about, 
about local clearly and, and how out of home has always been strong for local marketers. But if you think about what's happening now um, in terms of, you know, uh, both a critical time for brands to stay active in the public in public spaces, but people are, you know, moving around less. Having said that, they may be moving around less, but they're still out there locally. Um, they may be um, traveling to less places, but certainly staying around their local communities and local areas. And so that's been great for uh, audiences, you know, still have an, an active and engaged audience. Um, and in some of the discussions we've had, you know, I think the marketers are recognizing that this is a real opportunity to use out of home uh, to continue to see that, that local spend. Um, and certainly hyper-local messaging, uh, clearly, um, you know, we've been bullish on that for, for a long time. Um, turning now to digitization, which is, um, you know, moving into slide 13. You know, look, we've, we've all talked about this all the time, about how digital out-of-home ad spend continues to grow, and, and it is very exciting. I mean, um, you know, the digital um, bulletins and, you know, large format digitals in the top markets are, are seeing, uh, you know, nice, we haven't seen a lot of slowdown there in, in the pandemic, and seeing nice, um, you know, nice, continue to see nice demand for those. So in top market digitals, you know, um, for example, in LA, you know, we're seeing a lot of, of demand for top market LA digitals. Um, moving now, though, to something that we, you know, tying into LA, and we don't want this to be missed, so you can see this on slide 15. You know, um, while we always talk about digital, we thought we'd spend a minute to just reinforce, um, you know, non-digital inventory as a branding platform. And as we mentioned at the outset of this presentation, uh, you know, marketers are clearly recognizing the need and are spending um, in terms of branding. Um, and so, you know, print stuff, I mentioned LA Digitals, but you know, we've said this, um, you know, before, you know, the, the stuff that Netflix acquired on the Sunset Strip, you know, really some of the most powerful out-of-home branding as a platform in the United States uh, for a variety of reasons. Don't need to go into them here, but just on slide 16, you see the same thing with Apple. I mean, you know, just because um, we talk about digital all the time, we just want to reinforce that, you know, many of the top brands um, continue to see the power of, of using outdoor non-digital inventory. So, um, you know, turning to slide 17 and 18, you know, in terms of the opportunity and dollars that, you know, we're very sensitive. We want as, uh, you know, look at PJ Solomon, we cover every media channel, uh, radio, TV, uh, obviously online, new media channels, and obviously out of home, we've always said is, is our favorite because of, you know, all the reasons you know. So don't need to spend a lot of time on that. But needless to say, what we are concerned about is that there are what we call at-risk out-of-home dollars. So if you think of the out-of-home media pie, there's probably in our estimates about a billion and a half dollars that are, are, are at risk. And what does that mean? It means they're impacted by COVID more than, than others. Um, and we want to make sure those dollars don't flow out of the out-of-home media bucket. Uh, that's why we're really excited to see some of these top national uh, markets potentially seeing some of the dollars that, you know, are in some of those at risk, um, you know, areas where, you know, people aren't congregating or those areas are shut down. It's usually on-premise media or, um, you know, media in the physical world where, you know, literally those, those places are shut down and closed. Uh, we want to make sure that those, those dollars, and we're working to do that in the conversations we've been having, to make sure they stay, with, stay within out of home and are redistributed to other uh, out of home formats for right now that aren't shut down. Um, and then if you think about uh, uh, the ability to grow that pie, so take the eight and a half billion dollar bucket that we've talked about in the past and say, how do we get that bigger? You know, right now, you know, uh, looking at radio, just such an impact uh, with, with COVID, you know, really accelerating the decline of terrestrial radio in a, in a massive way. Um, so lots of dollars there that are uh, an opportunity, particularly on the local side, uh, to go after those dollars. And then, of course, um, on digital, while, um, you know, we're certainly seeing, um, you know, some, some uh, growth in terms of dollars shifting around, they have their challenges, right? So we like to think that uh, those channels are seeing a lot of growth in the pandemic, and they are. Um, relative to other channels, uh, they still have their own challenges in terms of um, you know, privacy and tracking and data. And so, you know, out of home should really go after that opportunity as well, uh, given, for example, what's happening with some of the operating system upgrades uh, and privacy, the opportunity for out of home to, to, to you know, seize on, um, on the challenges that face other challenges with respect to, to that data. Um, you know, and out of home has its own challenges as well with respect to, to um, to some of those changes, but we do think overall um, out of home should, should benefit. Uh, when we look at the next slide, and this is slide 19, you know, you, you think about those at-risk dollars that we talked about. This is critical because it's so hard um, to increase the pie. We don't want to see any dollar shifting out of the industry 
Um, you know, if you think of some of the um, some of the digital to home networks or other networks where you know they they've been facing some pressure because they're closed or unable to open in the way that they were, um, you know, we want to again make sure that those dollars um, stick within the industry. And then the detail on twenty around radio, um, you know, just to spend thirty seconds on on radio. Um, this is, as we mentioned, you know, really an opportunity. You think about re re what revenue um, estimates are for public radio operators. I mean, massive declines. Uh, across the board, um, and it doesn't look that much better in 2021. Certainly, um, we're, we're seeing pockets of improvement, but it doesn't feel uh, the same momentum that Out of Home has uh, into 2021. Everybody is is confident uh, that Out of Home will be back uh, in a strong way in 2021. You know, with radio and the challenges they have, uh, it's just unclear, um, you know, what what to see there. Um, and then if you, uh, we met, you know, the detail on 21, uh, this is just some detail. We'll, we'll let you um, look through this on your own after the call. But um, needless to say, uh, we, we certainly think that uh, out of home has to seize on how, you know, targeting and measurement, everything we've been saying in terms of attribution. Obviously, uh, we think, um, you know, new operating systems will uh, reduce the effectiveness of these sort of new media channels, digital, online, and even to some extent mobile. Uh, so we do think that, um, you know, this is an opportunity for out of home to say, okay, how are we going to go after this? And we know that some conversations are occurring uh, real time on, on this. Um, and if you, we can skip, we can skip through the detail in 22, but uh, I think the punchline in 22 is the same, the same thing that we need to make sure that dollars shift into out of home uh, from the challenges that these sort of new media channels will have with, the, with these operating system changes. And the one thing that conversation that we're having today uh, with many, because there, there's certainly a thought that with mobile and location targeting, that out of home will be challenged by that. I think it's important for uh, folks to get the message out there that out of home could actually, uh, you know, emerge more strongly with this um, because of the challenges that are facing both online and mobile. Um, and uh, you know, out of home uh, doesn't have the same, uh, you know, privacy concerns. Having said that, you know, we've certainly seen the coupling of mobile and out of home. And want to make sure that out of home doesn't, um, you know, get left behind in terms of, um, you know, using mobile data uh, to drive out of home. So it's it's kind of a balanced thing. We just want to make sure folks are focused on this, and it seems like they are. So with that, you know, I think we're coming. To, we are at the end of the presentation. And I was going to say, you know, with the overall conclusion here, it's important to to just make sure everybody's aware of, of what's happening uh, into 2021. Uh, as we've said. You know, based on third quarter earnings, fourth quarter earnings across the board, not just within out of home media, overall brand advertising has had this solid rebound. Um, and certainly out of home is going to um, disproportionately benefit from that. You know, we would expect the momentum to continue throughout uh, 2020 and into 2021. So in short, you know, glad to see and we are feeling much more confident in terms of uh, out of home media audiences back. Obviously, we've seen some challenges in some pockets, some of the digital out of home uh, networks that are currently shut down, uh, you know, some of the transit uh, where, you know, folks are, are uh, less willing to potentially go underground, ridership levels, not where they were. Uh, but as again, as we see, as we see those ridership levels improve, we're going to be much more confident. Uh, we don't expect transit advertising to go anywhere because people do need to, to um, use public transit. Uh, so, we, so we're confident those, um, those dollars will return. Uh, probably more strongly than ever, but uh, it's going to take time. Uh, so with that, um, you know, that comes to the conclusion of the presentation. Not sure. Happy to take questions if there are any. If not, uh, I know folks usually uh, message me offline and happy to talk offline as well. Do you see any opportunity for out of home in the, uh, in the fewer reduction of ad supported TV due to streaming growth? Yes, a massive opportunity. So this is interesting. And we've been saying that, you know, blurring these buckets, the streaming bucket is obviously getting larger and larger in terms of advertising associated with streaming media. Um, and certainly um, within some of the place-based networks, but even if you think of, of transit within out of home and, and digital media, really an opportunity to go after some of that. Because the way we see it, you know, streaming video and advertising, whether you're streaming video in your living room, while you're sitting on the bus, wherever you are, um, there's an opportunity to also see video um, everywhere, as uh, as we've all been saying for for a while. So, really, an opportunity to go after those dollars and uh, programmatic uh, will certainly help that. And when we talk about programmatic, there we're not just talking about 
uh, programmatic as it relates to out of home, but programmatic as it relates to streaming uh, video. Great. Uh, someone asked, uh, will out of home breach the $10 billion mark in 2021? Um, probably not at this point, but um, but uh, uh, what you know, you did say that you think 2021 will be strong. I mean, do you have any thoughts on sort of where you, the trajectory of the industry might grow over the next maybe two or three years once the pandemic is over? Yeah, look, that's we we are obviously very long term bullish on the sector. But if you think about 2021 and the overall out of home, you know that, and there's different ways to look at it. Some people include cinema, some don't. Cinema is a large portion of, of out of home media spend. We like to include cinema in that spend. You know, it's close to a billion dollars. If theaters uh, don't come back in the way, and we, we don't think theaters are going anywhere. We just think it's going to take time, uh, not only for all, you know, all theaters to reopen more normally, but also for the ad spend to return there. Um, you know, those, the, you know, that will certainly impact the ability for out of home to, to grow its share. Um, but if, if, if you start to see some of those, um, you know, some of those normalize, uh, look, we're again, bullish for a lot of reasons, the, you know, continued fragmentation of media, um, you know, out of home stands to benefit by the further fragmentation of media. We mentioned all the challenges around radio, certainly, uh, you know, TV, uh, particularly non-linear, uh, you know, programming, the opportunities, uh, there, you know, linear TV certainly has stress and pressure. So traditional TV under tremendous pressure. So we, you know, we continue to see the pandemic accelerating a lot of the media trends uh, that we thought would take years and years. So in terms of TV, you know, regular TV, um, you know, the, the cutting of the cord, you know, all these things are happening a lot more quickly uh, because of the pandemic, which is certainly putting a lot of dollars up for grabs. And a lot of those dollars are going to YouTube and Facebook and other new media channels, but there's a real opportunity for out of home uh, to take some of those dollars. Uh, but, you know, what really concerns us as we mentioned in the presentation, you know, we don't want to see dollars flow out of the industry. Uh, so the Idaho media specialists have to do a really good job to make sure that if they were, um, you know, placing advertising within theaters or elsewhere to make sure that it stays uh, within the Idaho media bucket. There's been a, you know, a lot of pressure on, um, on uh, revising the way we think about measurement and audience. And I, I know a geopath, um, you know, they're looking at ways to enhance measurement impressions and go to more real-time traffic data, real-time uh, measurement in terms of uh, exposures. What um, wh what do you think the opportunity or upside is there? I mean, do you think ha having that that better, more timely, granular data um, will um, convert into to more sales and to, to a bigger piece of the pie for the industry? Will, will it help grow uh, the business? Absolutely, in the long term. You know, in the shorter term, we're not sure. I mean, uh, certainly data has been key uh, for, for every channel. Um, and that's particularly why some channels have performed better than others. But, um, you know, in the short term with, with the pandemic, there's just a lot of uncertainty. And so that uncertainty uh, doesn't necessarily build as much confidence uh, in the data, which is why it's more important than ever um, to make sure that the data and how you're collecting that data and using that data um, you know, not only complies with changes that are being made to, to if you think of mobile operating systems, but just more broadly to make sure that um, there's transparency and accountability. You know, we've seen those networks, particularly in digital at home networks, um, that, you know, those that provide, uh, you know, strong data, third party data um, with measurement, um, the ability to, to um, you know, show lift and show um, attribution and lift is, is critical. Um, so if, if, you know, if other uh, you know, pockets of out of home can show that same lift, we're gonna see the same benefits here. So, um, so there's, the short answer to your question is, look, there's a lot of uncertainty right now, but as that uncertainty goes away and we see more normalized um, patterns of spending and media spend, yes, the data is everything because you can't level the playing field with Facebook and YouTube and other uh, media channels if you don't have um, you know, levels of attribution and measurement. Great. Well, listen, Mark, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your insights today and your time. We appreciate that. Um, please stick around. Um, and we're going to move over now to, um, to the uh, second part of our discussion today, which is our roundtable of our CROs uh, here in the industry. So uh, I think you have all uh, you'll recognize these gentlemen who are joining us now. Um, they've been with us before. We had a great conversation last uh, May and and it was one of the really 
highly rated webinar. So we thought it would be really terrific to have him back now to talk a little bit about the business now that we've evolved since May. Things have changed obviously quite a lot. And so we want to hear, uh, hear their thoughts now uh, in terms of what we're looking at in terms of our business, the economy, and where we think the, the business is heading in the new year. So I'm joined by Bob McClain. I'm Bob McCune, uh, the EVP uh, and Chief Revenue Officer uh, on Clear Channel Outdoor. Bob McCune, welcome. Uh, John Miller, the SVP of Sales and Sales Operation at Lamar. Hello, John Miller. And Clive Punter, EVP and Chief Revenue Officer for Outfront Media. Hello, Clive. Hi, gentlemen. How are you today? Great. Good. Good to see you. Um, listen, so that was pretty interesting, uh, what Mark was, was talking about. Where, where do you think um, we're heading for 2021? Um, you know, Magna has said that, um, that they predict the industry will be up back up about 7% next year, that it, they're really bullish, that out of home will grow as fast or faster than most other media channels. Once, once certainly the pandemic is behind us or we have some sort of um, vaccine so that we can get on to business as usual. So assuming, you know, we get it to business as usual at some point, I mean, do, do, you, do you guys think that we're, we'll, we'll sort of re return to a previous pandemic levels and, of growth and, and interest in the medium? John, I'll start with you. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks for having us. Nobody has the crystal ball. Yeah. Anybody that says they know where it's going to be is, um, you know, is it a, a I guess I guess um, the, the predictions on the presidential race in terms of the poll <laughs> was a little off. If we could get those pollsters to work on it for us, maybe. Um, listen, we've um, here at Lamar, we've always been a, um, a GDP plus company. And so a lot of it depends on GDP, consumer confidence, what goes on in the marketplace. Uh, so I, I, it made me um, kind of sit up straight when Mark said nine to 16, um, that, you know, that's really aggressive really aggressive, but a lot of things have to come uh, into place for us to get back on track to, to you know, the way we were in 2019. So there's a lot of uh, things out there that are affecting our business, that are affecting our customers. So um, uh, a, a lot of things that could affect us, but we'll see. Like I said, uh, we've always been GDP or GDP plus. So we'll see how that goes. Bob, what do you say? Uh, so thanks for having us, Stephen. Right, and great to know that our last session was so highly rated. That's a nice tidbit. Um, what do I say? Look, I think you know, John said it best with the crystal ball. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. I think that what I would say is that the the um, the trends we're seeing are positive, right? So we like what's going on, and I think you're you know seeing the improvement in our business, and we know that we had devastation in our business last year, and and that's going to you know factor into the back half of the year. Um, but but we don't really know. I would say that the the fundamentals of the business are still very very strong in the environment. Uh, the competitive environment challenges that our competitors face, Mark went through some of them, are still there. And I would say on the positive side, right, to kind of get to whatever number this get this this lands at is, you know, what we went through forced us to really confront some challenges, right, it, really quickly, right, about attribution measurement and so forth, how we connect with customers. That's going to make us stronger. As far as a number goes, I, I don't I don't know how to how to pin it on a number, but I am I am bullish about the opportunity based on how we're coming through this right now. Clive, what's your perspective? Um, listen, Jeremy said on, on our earnings call yesterday that <clears throat> audiences are a prerequisite to um, advertisers spending. And I think we've seen audiences come back, you know, in a mixed way, actually. You, you know, one of the things that's really come to the fore over the last eight months is just the, the variances across the US of how consumers have reacted, uh, both in terms of spending habits, but also, um, you know, the time they're spending in various places. So I think, um, you know, who knows, Stephen, I, I think to, to Bob and John's point, and I concur completely, the good news is that we're all seeing sequential uh, growth, um, you know, month on month. So everything's heading in the right direction. Uh, but I think it will depend on, you know, one, the audiences and how consumers continue to respond. And two, some of the key verticals, you know, if you think of, that movie theatres are still closed, you know, um, it's interesting, isn't it? People talk about uncertainty. Um, and I think there's still a lot of uncertainty. The interesting thing about uncertainty, sometimes uncertainty can be positive, not negative. I think we always assume it's negative. So, you know, if movie theatres, um, you know, open up and consumers are going to start going back to see movies, 
um, you know, and, and the entertainment slate starts spending again because it's, a, you know, it, it, Out of Home does very, very well and does very well for movie releases, you know, then, then maybe that's going to be very helpful next year uh, for, for the Out of Home business. So I think, you know, some of the key verticals are, are going to make a difference next year too. I mean, uh, you know, you're right. It's it, obviously it, it's it's such a great point that you know our success in, in media is tied to audience, and having the audience come back is critical. I mean, you know, and an ask come back as as Mark said, uh, in many regards, many pockets, many parts of our industry, the audience is coming back, has come back strongly. I mean, what are you guys doing to uh, to uh, to convince brands to sustain or increase their out of home spend uh, during this period? So uh, what, what we've tried to do, Stephen, is, you know, I think I said this on the last call, you know, different companies are at different stages. You know, some have been not for six, some are actually winning and some are, you know, have gone, have been ruined. And, and I think the first thing is understanding when you say convincing brands, you know, ultimately, you know, it's really understanding where are brands at the moment? You know, have they been impacted by what's gone on? I think the second thing is, you know, we try and show up when we have a conversation with a, with a customer, um, you know, and I'm talking about a brand or an agency and uh, the specialists, you know, we try and turn up with a sense of purpose. And that purpose is, you know, I think, and I think we all do this, not just out front. I think we all try and turn up with a view of how can we help brands grow? You know, that's what we're here to do. And uh, I think Dan Le Levy said it on the CMO call, you know, it's about delivering audiences and delivering outcomes. So I think, you know, I think we've been trying to listen to customers, um, have a consultative sales approach, um, you know, help customers understand where the audiences are through data. Um, and also, you know, on a local level, turning up with ideas around stimulus packages as well. So where businesses have been blown off course, how can we help those businesses get back on track through providing some level of stimulus? So there's some of the things that, that we've been doing. Yeah, and I guess it's, it's, it's the government has a stimulus package, a new one coming out that could help too. Yeah. What say you, Bob? I think, you know, similar to what Clive said, I mean, the consultative approach is really the only way, whether it's local or national. And I think that for us has been critical to understand really what these businesses are going through. I mean, if we go out and we try to sell out of home to somebody whose business is in operating or they're in a tough situation, we seem pretty tone deaf. So I do think that getting to them first with an understanding of their businesses, what their business challenges are, and then how we can help solve them, whether it's a data solution to identify where those people are now and kind of find out where they were before. I mean, that, that could be one. Um, you know, I think, the, uh, I think that that's been the critical part for us, both on a local and national level. And I think, look, I think partnering with our agencies, with our specialists, and directly with the customers has been really the only way to, to, to kind of move forward. And that's what we continue to do. Partners and partnering, yeah, exactly. So, so John, um, I mean, obviously, the, uh, the the way traffic patterns have um, rebounded has been very inconsistent throughout the country. I, I think that you've had um, probably better success in some of the second and third tier markets, the smaller uh, DMAs, uh, where maybe audiences and traffic have, have come back more robustly uh, over the course of the last several months. I mean, how how has um, traffic pattern and audience impacted? your sales strategies at your various level in the organization? When this first started back in April, May, it was huge. The um, stay-at-home orders affected us. We had two things to overcome. We, had, um, we lost a significant part of our audience um, and then consumer confidence, no consumer spending, nobody had any money, businesses were closing. Uh, so those were uh, two hurdles to overcome. The first one that I think we overcame was uh, the traffic. I think the audience came back uh, quickly in the um, secondary markets, uh, slower in uh, the larger markets. But, but what we did was we, um, first we communicated with our customer and, and to Bob's point, it's a great point with a relevant discussion. I mean, if, if, you have a, um, if you had a hotel that was closed, we're not calling on those guys, you know, talking about how they need to advertise. We had relevant discussions uh, without being um, uh, tone deaf. So we, we communicated. Uh, one thing we told our sales force is um, we, we don't know what's going to happen. So we could not, um, we could not uh, commit to what was going to happen, but we could give them clarity on what was going on today. So the traffic came back. Uh, I, my concern, I've told you guys before, my concern was that our larger customers, uh, national customers who were in uh, New York, were looking out of their window. And what they saw out of the window, they were laying that across the country. 
And that just wasn't the case. Um, uh, consumer confidence has come back in, in uh, middle America. The traffic has come back in middle America. And therefore, our sales have uh, come back in, in a big way in middle America. And so the traffic's back. Stephen, I think, I think it was you that said it's back. It's just different. Uh, it's just, or maybe it was Mark that yeah. said, you know, the, the commute may not be there, but the traffic is back. Maybe not 100%. I just want to be real about that. We're going to see where um, Geopath comes out with the numbers here pretty soon for uh, 2021. But for the majority of Lamar markets, the traffic is back uh, and the activity is back. Yeah, it's tr different, but different, you know, and, right. instead of waiting to the weekend to do your grocery and other types of shopping, people might, because they're working at home, go through the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and do some of those, those activities. They're still doing them, but in a different pattern, exactly. Right. Um, so, um, I mean, you're talking about sort of the way you had to pivot in terms of dealing with customers. Like, like Bob, have there been some short-term sort of tactical changes in the sales process at Clear Channel um, that, um, you know, have allowed you to be more flexible? And do you think some of these changes that you've had to impl implement in your business model may be permanent business changes? So, well, look, we've done a lot of things um, through this pandemic probably differently than we would have done this year. And I think that's a good thing. So if you think about some of the tactical changes, you know, we, we, we all in the industry work closely with our, our agency and client partners on uh, flexibility, considering the situation they're in. So that's, that's working with them on, on inventory moves and such. And I think that's something we'll look at down the road, right, on, on, on how that works. I think that's a two-way conversation, Stephen around flexibility, but also how we operate our business, right? So that that's a long-term one. And I think that's something that, you know, we'll continue to kind of evolve. Look, what we did was we, we invested uh, in business development tools. So we outfitted every person in our team with some, some business development tools to identify how they can stay closer to their customers, how they can identify new customers at a time when they needed to. I definitely think that's a big part of it. I think also, you know, we have a roadmap on automation within our company and our, our team does an excellent job. I had a sales ops and, and a CTO, and we really push them to increase that automation. So what does that process look like internally and how do we bring that forward? And I think that's been really, really positive. So I think it's accelerated, Stephen, kind of our roadmap internally on automation, right? Workflow automation out of necessity. Right, that's been a critical part. You know, electronic well, which will maintain be part of your business with, going forward. With, without a doubt, electronic signature. Think about the things that we yeah. do manually when you're co-located. You just aren't able to do. And I think that's been really positive in a lot of discoveries, kind of uh, for for us moving forward. That's great. You listen, uh, Rick Robinson has a question here, uh, Clive. Um, as Rick Robinson astutely points out, you, you never never waste a crisis, yeah. and he wants to know. Um, you know, how, how you redefine the game at Outfront and how, um, how, is it, how has this crisis forced you to make improvements and improve your company? Do you have some specific ways how you think your company and your business has actually improved and is doing things better than they were before? Yeah, I think, I think there's a couple of things. Um, listen, I, you know, every business has had to rethink and, you know, acceleration we've all, we've all heard. So I think a lot of that acceleration has accelerated some of the decisions that probably, you know, we, we probably um, wanted to take. Part of that is around technology. You know, Bob mentioned automation. Um, we're doubling down on automation. We recognize both internal automation and also external automation, you know, has to be the way forward for our business. Um, you know, everyone's talking about programmatic. Programmatic is still small dollars, but um, it's, it's, you know, it's uh, going to be the growth engine for all of our business in the future. And I think not just digital programmatic, but on the static side as well. So I think, I think there are two key things that we've done. Um, I think one of the other things we've done is, you know, listen, is, you know, we were, if I'm honest, we were people first, you know, we went into this around preservation of our people and retention. So we've really tried to uh, think about our people around what they need to be motivated and retained. Secondly, it was about customers. And third, it was about the community, because we felt and I think we've done this well as an industry, actually, um, I think we all came together. So whether it was the, you know, the creative that we put out on the streets, you know, the clapping and the thank yous and all that sort of stuff, CDC, so I think, you know, again, I don't know too many other media industries that have come together and, and done what we've managed to achieve throughout the last eight months. So, um, you know, I think we've changed a lot of things. 
Um, and I think, you know, hashtag grow stronger, it, it is going to make us as a business uh, much stronger, I think, going forward. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. I think that's really true. Hey, hey, John, um, we've talked a lot about um, in, in, on calls and times we've spent together over the last few months, a, a lot about how you, how you motivate sales teams and sales professionals in a period where they're not making their budgets and they're not making their bonuses. Uh, what, what do you do to, to keep salespeople who are very aggressive by nature and want to be successful? How do you motivate them and keep them, keep them going? I think that's the hardest thing we've had to overcome. It's it, it, and the most important thing we do. Um, uh, Tommy hit on the call last week when, when this, uh, when this first happened, I remember driving into work, it was like March the 15th. And I just envisioned myself being a local Lamar rep going to call on somebody. And I got this pit in my stomach. Could you imagine having to make those calls? It just was horrible. So um, we got together and we said we weren't going to stay in the fetal position under our desk. We got everybody on a call and we said, we're going to talk to every customer. We're not going to hide behind this. We're going to talk to every customer. So that's the first thing we did. Great communication. And then we ensured that everyone, all of our sales reps had the tools that they needed to be successful. Uh, like Bob was saying, the online tools, the online pitch, everything you need to be uh, successful. And then to be have relevant pitches. And when it first all started, we all remember his high school graduation. We caught on every high school out there talking about how to promote their uh, graduation. So um, make certain we communicated with our customers, uh, make certain they had all the tools. And then going back to clarity, we, 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 oh, and then we redid budgets. We, we felt like our, our sales folks uh, needed relief in their budgets. You, um, you, you know, you can't, uh, you can't sell the brand if you're concerned about playing, paying your light bill. And so we redid budgets. Um, and then we had a, a, a contest where we focused and gave them clarity so they wouldn't listen necessarily to all the noise, Stephen, going on. They could focus on a number. And it was a total contract value, year in total contract value, and it wound up being really successful. Um, but we have come out of this thing off the backs of our local salespeople. They are, they got grit, they're tenacious, they love their customers, they have great relationship with their customers. And our local managers just motivated them and let them know they, you know, they worked at a good company with a great product and we have great leadership out there. Um, it was the hardest thing to do and it's still our concern. Uh, Stephen, how do, you, how do you promote your culture from a distance? That, that's a concern that I have. I just don't know how to do it. You know, we, we all, all of us on, on the call have a culture in our organization that happens right out here, right? When we're, when we're with them. And now when we're having to do it from a distance, it's just not easy. You do this a whole lot more. You, you do these Zoom calls a whole lot more. You got to be talking to your folks every day and uh, give uh, clear goals and give them the tools to reach them. So that's probably more information than you care. No, that's good. That's good stuff. That's good stuff, John. Do, do you, Bob, you have you having similar? Yeah, it, it, it's similar. Well, it seems. So, so one thing I'd add uh, that, that 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 we we found very helpful in engaging our teams and keeping them motivated, Stephen, was just you know we've we've created some opportunities where myself, Scott, some of the senior leadership can work directly with the salespeople and then take you know be, because we're working remotely, you know, we can take great work that's being done in one market to share across the other, and then bring these people into subgroups to solve problems, whether it's targeting at certain accounts, working in verticals, you know, being the first to, to test out data solutions, and then using them as the champions across our entire company. So then they feel like they're part of, and they are part of something bigger. So really putting them on a different stage. It's been very helpful. It's self-serving, right? And it's great. The, the benefit is it really makes our people, um, you know, feel more engaged and a part of something more connected. But what it does do is it validates an approach we're doing. If I highlight somebody in Jacksonville who's having success in auto by leveraging an approach, I can then use her response to her, her approach to somebody else. It's not me or John or Clive and talking, it's actually somebody doing the job. It's not that we didn't do that before, but when we're jumping on planes, running around and not in the branches as much as we should, it was a little more challenging. So that's one thing we've created these little subgroups and really brought the seller's efforts and results forward in a way that was really meaningful. Great idea. Great idea. So, Clyde, you talked a little bit about how um, how right now, of course, the the 
we're not seeing a lot of activity in the film business, entertainment business for obvious reasons, but are there some growth categories that have emerged from the COVID pandemic that, that you guys are seeing real successes in and strength? Yeah, so, um, you know, there's some great stuff on this, isn't there? That, you know, during, during the pandemic, we've really moved from consumerism to essentialism. And, you know, listen, toilet rolls being sold out, saucepans being sold out, you know, crazier. But I think, um, you know, therein lies the secret. So I think the fact that we've had that, the fact that we've had the flight to digital, you know, it's digital everything. And, you know, digital is really around e-commerce, leisure and entertainment and education. Everything's been transformed online. So I think that's been a, a massive shift. Um, but I also think that, you know, there's a, as you know, there's a number of um, businesses and sectors in, in, in the pandemic that have really been thriving. So, um, you know, home improvements, we're starting to see CPG, you know, autos uh, are really coming to the fore uh, and using out a home more and more, especially as, you know, people are spending more time uh, driving at the moment. So, um, you know, streaming everything. I mean, you, again, you've seen, um, you know, we are the streamers medium, really. Uh, tech, telemedicine, you know, things at a local level like online schooling and online education. So this, there's been a massive shift, Stephen, I think, of some of the brands. The good news, and again, the level of optimism that we have um, is, is around, you know, some of the new entrants to our media, um, because there are, you know, new uh, vertical, um, you know, verticals emerging that, um, you know, are really start to use our medium um, you know, exceptionally well. You're on mute, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, John, do you, do you see the same things? Do you, are there other categories you've seen maybe out in some of your, uh, your markets that have been like, wow, these are really, uh, these are really great categories. They're, they're surprisingly strong. I mean, obviously we know political did well this year. Oh, you're, on, you're, you're also on mute. <laughs> I was about to bust your chops for doing it and dang gum if I didn't do it myself. Um, well, I, had, but I, I had a dog barking for a second. I there. heard that. I heard that. God, dog. Um, same verticals. Uh, you know, uh, we, we went through the process. Home improvement was great. Insurance is great. Interest rates are low. They're giving away money. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, our banking was a little off, but it looks like it's coming back. Real estate uh, is coming back. Um, uh, so, yeah, same as Clive. They, they, they hit on. And it's isn't it interesting, guys, how those uh, verticals have changed during the process. Uh, relevant people to call on. Look, this summer or in the spring, we were calling on uh, travel. Right? Everybody was talking about travel. And so we were calling on travel, all the destinations. And then we got into politics. And now we're getting into um, uh, some retail uh, for the end of the year. So uh, so same ones. Uh, we, we had a big push on uh, nursing homes. You know, they had a, 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 a a brand uh, issue they had to overcome. So we, we pushed those, but they, uh, being, being relevant, um, is, is the key to, to Clive's point. Great point. Gotta be, gotta be relevant. So one thing just to add on that, right? So Stephen, just to make me think about this, I think we touched on this on our last conversation and we were starting to push on this as a, as a company. If you think about the growth, you look at Home Depot, you look at some of the, the grocery store chains that are through the roof, right? Because people are going there out of necessity. And we do business with them and that's and that's fine. And maybe we should do obviously a lot more. But if you look at the products sold in there, right? So if we take a step back and we're pushing our team to really take a step back and say, look, retail, people are going to these, these locations at a higher rate. Who are the products that have been there? And these are the people, these are kind of like the, you know, that blue ocean, right? It's outside of the people we, we're fortunate to get. And there's a ton of packaged goods and companies that are based in our markets, right? Some of them are headquartered in Lamar markets or our markets are out there. And we need to talk to them. And we need to have that story about what we can do to, to, to drive people to the retail location. It's interesting. I'll give you one stat that we're using around here. If you look at what eMarketer put out, right, the other day on, on holiday spending, at the surface level, they said it's going to go up 1%. And the headline they put, Stephen, was that, that e-commerce, because of the pandemic, right, is different this year. It's going to start earlier. It's going to, it's going to grow by 36%. But if you look at it a little deeper and you said, well, what does that 36% mean in terms of the total sales? 81% of, of the sales that they project will still happen at a brick and mortar. 19%. And that's awesome. And the beauty of out of home is we can be that priming effect for mobile and digital. Like we can do that really, really well. But there's nobody that's better at driving that journey 
to a location than us. But what's lost in it is, well, 36 percent and, 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 and sure, you know, retail in store is going to be down five. It's still 81 percent of all the sales for the holiday will happen with somebody leaving their house. Right. Seeing a Lamar board out front book and going into a store and our ability to drive that is really, really powerful. So I just, again, just wanted to kind of add that because we're thinking about the, the products within those stores and then our ability to drive it there. Um, Clive, are there, um, this, this is great and it sounds like things are definitely on the up swing and we're all excited about that, but are there, are there concerns that some of your customers are expressing now as we're looking towards the end of the year? Um, are there some, some things that you want to be cautious about or places that you're a little concerned and you're, feeling a little shaky about? Um, I think, listen, you know, I used the word uncertainty earlier, and I think, you know, there's uncertainty around lots of things, aren't there? There's uncertainty around, you know, consumers and, and, and what's happening. There's consumers and the economy. There's uncertainty around what's actually going to happen with COVID. You know, most of Europe's gone back into lockdown, which is concerning. You know, I know it's a long way to swim across the Atlantic, but who knows what's going to happen. Um, and, you know, there's concern about the political situation, social unrest. So I think every brand is having to be fleet of foot and very agile at the moment. Uh, they, they really are. So for me, the, the number one thing that, that we hear is just that level of uncertainty that, that, that sort of pushes through to, you know, later booking cycles, later commitment, which is why we're having to be fleet of foot and flexible um, even more than ever. Yeah, yeah. Same, same Bob. Same for you. It is uh, definitely. I mean, that's that's kind of a challenge one, two, and three. The only other one I'd add in there is is the discussion we're having more about um, when they are going to commit. They're talking about, and this is Rick Robinson asked a question earlier. It's right up Rick's alley. Like, what is the right message? So creative. So how do I communicate at this time? Right. And that's still, it was in the pandemic. We talked a lot. I think John and Clyde talked about that. But now with brands saying, I need to be in there but how do I do it in a responsible way? What is my message to consumers now? So that's the only other thing that doesn't stop them, but that it actually is an opportunity for us to dig deeper. So that's the only other thing, but Clive spot on that his points, the, the biggest one now. Just building on that, Bob, I, think, I think you're right. I think, listen, I think brands, um, because listen, get your creative message wrong at the moment. And it, it's, you know, it's, um, it's terrible. It's interesting. I um, did a webinar with uh, Jennifer Halloran from Mass Mutual. One of the things she, uh, a little while ago, one thing she talked about, which I really liked, which was, you know, her focus around their marketing and really moved from brand metrics to brand values. And do you know what I mean? If you think about that shift of actually getting that creative message out, especially on out of home, because that's what we do incredibly well. I know we deliver the metrics at the same time, but I think every brand is now thinking about what, what brand value are they representing on the street as opposed to, you know, just what, what um, response am I going to get immediate response? So I think it's a really good point, Bob. I was going to say the same thing, Bob. I've been so impressed with the way that these creative uh, groups, Mindy and our group and you guys, have they been able to, to pivot to the message? It's just been phenomenal. The, 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 the way the whole industry has so on a dime pivoted to relevant messaging. Um, it surprised me the amount of our business that revolves around events. I, it, I, I had no idea until it went away um, how much of our business revolve around events. And you say things that we're concerned about, Stephen, I'm concerned that the events don't come back next year. You know, Mardi Gras up in, up in the air, Jazz Fest is up in the air. You know, we're just not, we're just not certain what's going to happen. Uh, ball games, you know, you just okay, you don't, Super Bowl, yeah. Right? So you just don't know, and and a lot of our business revolves around those events. I oh, think we're guessing this. We're yeah, right. We're guessing that the Olympics will come back, but who knows if it'll come back? Who, who knows? But uh, Sean mentioned it on the call this morning. Um, you know, we're concerned about our restaurants. You know, those guys, you know, still at twenty five percent here. I'm not certain what they are in in New York, but I mean, those guys are struggling. Those, um, you know, those tablecloth restaurants are struggling. So that's, that's a concern. It's still real. Yeah. Yeah. There's still theme parks. A lot of places are still having trouble with live theater and Broadway, of course. Yeah. So, um, well, actually, let me, uh, Mark, are you still there? Mark Boydman, are you still with us? Because this is, a, we had another question come from the audience. There might be a better Mark Boydman question. Mark, are you there? 
Maybe not. Well, I'll, I'll throw it out there. Yeah, Maybe you guys... I'm here. I'm, yeah, I'm here. yeah, I thought this would be a good question. Sorry, a good question for you. Didn't mean to startle you. <laughs> I thought this would be a good question for you. Someone out there is asking if, if you see um, that there will be acquisition opportunities coming in the new year, and if you think the acquisition game might pick up again or um, or, or become active. Right. I'm actually, it's funny, I'm walking on the streets of New York and uh, starting to see some of the boards come down. That's it's really reassuring. Um, look, I think, and listening, this has been a good conversation. I think, uh, you know, as it relates to m and I think it's the same thing. We don't have the, the confidence yet, um, you know, in terms of, you know, folks really going out and stepping out of their shoes in terms of m and I think we need to see more certainty. Certainty builds confidence and confidence drives m and Having said that, uh, we've seen a lot of activity on the local side. There's certainly been M&A activity in terms of local markets, um, it, particularly, uh, you know, in the summer, there have been a lot of activity. You know, we see that slowing down a little bit. I think um, from our perspective, we won't see any major uh, transactions uh, in, the, in the coming weeks and months. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see what happens. I think what it really comes down to is the, the gap between seller expectations in terms of valuation and buyers where buyers are prepared to pay. And until sellers sort of bring those expectations down, you know, it becomes very hard as a seller uh, to go out there today and say, you want a 2019 valuation off of a 2019, um, you know, earnings, um, you know, what your historical earnings were. So, you know, people are focused on, on 2020, obviously, but willing to look beyond it, but looking at 2021, and we don't have that certainty yet. But as the, as the certainty uh, picture becomes more clear and as, you know, valuations on stabilize and, and maybe there's a new normal in terms of valuations, although we think given all the characteristics of out of home and, um, you know, given uh, the, the challenges that other media channels face, we think out of home valuations will recover, but it will take time. So uh, with all that said, we think 2021 will be an active year. Uh, you know, perversely, 2020 has been our most active year as a firm, um, not only as it relates to out of home media, but more broadly. Um, we don't, we're not sure about 2021. We'll have to see. Um, but certainly you'll see more, some, some restructurings um, in 2021, some capital raising that we saw in 2020 will repeat itself in 2021, but it'll be much more limited. So in short, uh, we do think there'll be some M&A. It just won't be at the levels that we saw in 2019 or 2018. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again, Mark, and enjoy your walk on, uh, on the streets of Manhattan. <laughs> Good. I'm about to. I'm about to get in the subway, Clive. So there. Oh, there go. you go, Clive. Good man. Yeah. Eyeball. Sure Clive, Clive 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 Clive. on the subway. They're all, they're all coming back. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, so um, are are you guys positioning your companies differently at all for 2021? Are you thinking about sort of just your value proposition anyway differently as you move forward into the new year, or is it uh, same as always? John? It's, it's, of course, it's not the same as always. I mean, it, you know, it's not the same as always. Um, we still have a great product. We still have great people. We still have um, great data. Um, the way we position it with our customers may be a little different. The way that we approach it with our customers may uh, be different. We, um, uh, we don't hide from um, traffic. You know, uh, and I'm not fearful of it. Uh, so that that will be a a hot topic, you know, depending on on how the traffic goes. And, but we have data, have great creatives. Um, so I, the the fundamentals um, have shifted a bit, but not significantly affected who we are as an industry or who we are as a as a company. I um our um our programmatic we had the best month in the history. Of um of yeah, programmatic right. congratulations on that. that was great. Uh, Ian and his team do a, a great job uh, with that. We our local activity is up, um, but you know all that activity, the ma majority of the activity, and this is something that we knew how to do, but we've become proficient at it. Is uh, these online pitches? We got to be great at it. You know that that changes, and where you can grow to be great at online pitch. So the fundamentals fundamentals of the of the product have not significantly changed how we present that product has. Yes, really, really smart. Thank you, John, for that. That's great. Listen, we're almost at the end of our, our, uh, 
our hour. Um, but before we go, I wanted to ask each of you, you know, tell me what is the one thing you are most optimistic about for 2021? Clive, what, what are you most optimistic about? Um, listen, I'm, I'm optimistic that at some point we're going to go from um, COVID to, to post-COVID. I, I actually think we're going to be talking about post-COVID at, at some point next year. And I think with that, I'm optimistic about our business, our industry, and that out of home will grow stronger. You know, the, the one thing when we go to post COVID, we're gonna look back and we're gonna really start to understand what we've learned um, because it's really difficult when you're in it to, to really understand what you are learning. Um, but I think, you know, so I, I think we're learning an incredible amount, uh, certainly our team are, I am, about how to operate, how to change, how to accelerate, so I'm optimistic about the, the PC moment, the post-COVID moment where, you know, we will once again, um, you know, uh, grow stronger and accelerate our, our business. I think, I think this, this business is a great business. It's in great shape. Um, and the fact that, you know, the tide's gone out a little bit, the tide is coming back. Um, and, um, you know, I'm really positive about this business and this industry. Yeah, I guess uh, someone asked uh, also on, on, on uh in the question bar, you know, if, if, if you're all going to be ready for that influx of new business in 2021, once there's a vaccine, and uh, it sounds like you're, you're ready, ready to go. Um, Bob, how about you? What's, what are you most optimistic about? So, look, I would say um, I'm optimistic about getting back to telling our story. You know, for six or so months, we were on the defense, right? And I think that um, we understood what happened. I think that 2021, um, if we have to walk out of with the learnings of this, right? We have to be honest that it was someone asked me, you know, what was the, you know, what's, how would you describe this year? I said, revealing, right? You know, really great stuff rose to the top. We uh, some challenges we had in the way we did business came to the surface. And I think we're doing a good job as an industry and as individual media owners are trying to solve that. So I'm excited with those things being strengthened with COVID, hopefully in a rear view mirror, we, we can move forward, but we have to take the learnings from this, right? We have to be a lot more agile. We have to be a lot scrappier for lack of a better term, right? Data conversations that were in the background are moving forward, understanding audience mobility and really driving towards outcomes. I think one of the questions in the chat from Casper was, how do you find these B2B audiences? And I think, you know, there's a way to do it with the solutions we all have. You know, we're, we're looking at partners that allow us to find those audiences in, in real life and then bring those forward. So, so I'm excited about putting all of that in motion, Stephen, yeah. with the, the pain that we went through this year in, in a much better environment. Yeah, Great. and John. Um, I, I believe that um, we'll look back and see that this didn't happen to us. It happened for us. You know, I've heard me say that before. You can't it's, waste that crisis. Yeah. And uh, the word that I like to throw around is it's been illuminating. It's put a spotlight on our shortcomings and on our strengths. And it's made us get off our butts and, and learn how to automate and to, to do the things that look when things are great. We can coast. You know, my mom always said you can only coast when you're going downhill. So, um, so we're not coasting, buddy. We're working, and I think um, I think that we're going to learn a lot from this, and we're going to look over our shoulder. And say, you know what? That might not have been the worst thing for us. Thank you. Well, listen. Thank you, guys. Three of the smartest men I know. Uh, I uh, really appreciate your time and your uh, little oh, group of influence, Stephen. <laughs> So, uh, John, Bob, Clive, thank you very much. Uh, also, Mark, thank you. Uh, appreciate your insights today as well. Uh, this webinar will be available later today in our, uh, our webinar library. So please go and uh, go listen to it again if, if you have an interest or share it with your friends. Uh, we'll be hearing from Ken Klein uh, next week about the results of the election, what it means to the out of home industry. So I want to thank all of you for joining us today. It was a great conversation. Thank and you, please. Have a great Thank afternoon. you, Stephen. You guys, take care. You guys, be safe.